No War Gaming here, bringing you an 8th edition Warhammer Fantasy Battle Report. Yes, this is My Ogres versus Triple T's Beastmen. Um, it's uh, 2,500 points. It's the standard point limit that we play at here. So um, we fought this game a couple weeks ago. It's a ton of fun. I actually think we did this in the middle of the day, so it was kind of weird. It was like a, a lunch time when we just kind of went in. All right, so let's get this started. Here are my spells. Um, I always take the Lore of Heavens on my Heavens Mage, and I also have to have the obligatory level 1 Butcher with the Maw. Spoiler, he never casts anything this game. Um, I actually think I got the Comet, but I dropped it. I do that kind of frequently. Um, generally when my opponent has lots of chaff, just Chain Lightning works better that way. There's my opponent's spells. It's got the Savage Beast of Horos, which always... Always got to watch out with the Beastman characters because they get those rerolls in addition to all the strength, but uh, strength and attack buffs they can get. And Wizards Wild Form, which can make those units of gores just you know real tough to churn through, especially since they strike before all of my ogres except for the man eaters. All right, here is my army. Um, I usually deploy this army Noblar first, then a couple of dogs and Iron Blasters. So typically what happens is my opponent has his entire army down before I even put down a, a meaningful ogre unit. Um, so I usually go on either left side or the right side, as you can see here. And there's the other side of the battle. You can see the Iron Blast for the Bulls and then uh, my super old phone. Good old phone. Here's the right side of the battlefield. The Gorgon... Uh, as soon as he put him out there, he said it was a mistake, and he should have put him behind the, the building to protect him from, you know, the Iron Blaster. But uh, it's just kind of hanging out there for the moment. We didn't, we aren't using the straight Beastman rules. We've modified them slightly to allow for marks, and we've reduced the point cost on a few things. So if you think the army looks overpointed, uh, that's only because we reduced point costs on a bunch of things, mostly the, the Gorgon and the monsters and things like that. Here's the other side of the battlefield. Uh, those Tuscor Chariots, I always worry about those things. Um, I mean, they're cheap, they're core, just Chariots in general. You just got to get rid of them. Um, the Infantry, I'm not overly worried, although I never like those 3 plus ward save characters. You just get stuck with them and they just never go anywhere. And I'm not a super close combat guy, so I don't have a lot that, that can really churn through those guys. All right, here is the battlefield after deployment. Turn one goes to my opponent, and he immediately throws that Gorgon behind the building. I actually had a good laugh about how he'd had him out and then just immediately ran behind the building. The spawn-looking creatures are actually supposed to be Pumbagores. Um, these models look a lot better than the Pumbagore models. So he ran those things up full speed. He moved the Xanagore, or no, I guess they're not Xanagore, the Zinchgore um, up into the, uh, the woods right there. Really, he's just trying to get shelter from the lead belchers. He'll try to he'll make a run for it across the table soon, but early on, it's it's just nice to get that minus one against me or I'm for my uh, shooting. Here's the other side of the table. Doesn't move up a ton, but moves up just a little bit. He knows the Noblar trick that's coming. Magic is a bust. Um, whoop, sorry. Uh, that's just the other side of the battlefield. Just the chariots moving up. All right. Uh, there's the Gorgon hiding. Oh, there's magic. He knocks out a Wizens. I let it go. I wasn't planning on shooting at the best, best of Gores, so I'll let Wizens go on any one unit. He only has the one mage, so he can only really protect one unit at a time, and then I'll just shoot at one of the others. There's Pants and Impenetrable Pelt. I'm not sure why he cast this. I think he just had some diets, and he was like, ah, screw it. Just threw it out there. There's no way I could get in combat with any of those guys. Oh, and the Flock of Doom. I actually had dice to dispel this, and I didn't. <laughs> I can't help it. If somebody casts spells on my Noblar, I just let it go. I mean, they're Noblar. I hate them so much. <laughs> I, I hated painting these models, too. So even my disdain for Noblars runs all the way down to my paint job for these things. <laughs> Here's the battlefield. I apologize for some of the blurry photos. My camera is weird. I'm still messing with the settings to get it to not do this. Um, early on, the pictures actually look a lot better. Later on, some of them are pretty not great. All right. 
Uh, my first thing was to clear a charge at that Pumbagore over there. He took off running. Uh, so he is all the way back there now. The bulls got nowhere near him, but they're up on that, that little rock hill thing. There's the rest of my line kind of shuffled up. The Noblar move up a little bit. Um, they're ready. They're getting up there just to, to start chapping those units so he can only bring them forward one at a time. And then I'll just shoot them down. Here's the other side. I think I considered moving the bulls up, and then I kind of moved them back. Um, that long range in the chariots, he should just be within charge range at this point. I, I always leave these guys at like the 12 inch line. So if my uh, my opponent wants to try to double six it to get in, I'm more than happy to let him fail that charge. There's magic. I used Grut Sickle, which gives me plus two to cast. Um, generally, I do it until my I draw up my opponent's dispel scroll. Um, I think in this game I used it the first three turns, maybe the first four. Um, it, you know, gets the magic going. And the first spell goes off. Yernon's Thunderbolt. And down goes the other Pumbagore. So now his chaff on the right side is either fleeing or dead. Um, which is just giving me the entire right flank. And there's the Harmonic Convergence on the Lead Belchers. I think this is the only time he lets this go off. Um, and you'll see why in a second. I'm not sure what this is a picture of. Oh, uh, I must have shot the, ch the chariot and killed it. Oh, yeah, I shot the chariot and killed it with one Iron Blaster. And this is the other Iron Blaster. He misfires and just turns around. My Iron Blasters misfire most of this game, actually. <laughs> There's the rest of shooting. Uh, I took out that half, that that back rank. Needing sixes, we're rolling ones. Needing fours, we're rolling ones with... Uh, both units of, of lead belchers. So it's not great shooting, but it's enough. If I can knock off a rank a turn, that makes those guys not very good in combat. And then even the lead belchers will be able to take them out. And here's Triple T's turn. So that's how the board looks at the moment. His first charge is against that Noblar. You can see the Noblar fleeing at the bottom of the screen. Um, I just went ahead and fled him, and so he's going to fail the charge. And this happened. He needed double sixes to get in. He got the double sixes. I in no way expected this. My Iron Blasters went within six inches of those bulls. I expect everything just to go away here. <laughs> I guess when you give your opponent the option, and he takes it, and then he gets the double six. You know, kudos to him. <laughs> and there's the... the other Pumbagore rallying all the way back by the by the building. It's going to be a while before he can come back up. And the Gorgon comes out to play. Oh, he's so cute. Triple T did a really good job on that guy. And there's the rest of the army, just moving forward. And the magic. Wizard's Wild form on that unit there. I'm not sure why he cast on this one. Probably been better off casting on the best score again, because then he'd be... I'd be at minus one to shoot these guys, and then the the best score is I'd be essentially minus one to wound them when they get that that toughness boost. But no, he threw them on the, the unit here. And then Pan's Pendril Pelt again. I think he casts this a whole bunch of times. It doesn't. It never comes into play. And there's that chariot. It slaughtered the bulls and ran through. I've got the model at the top, but I, I just hadn't picked it up yet by the time he, he plowed through. Somehow, my Iron Blaster passed its panic check. It never passes its panic checks. It's not within 12 inches of my general. It's way off the side. And also, he overran just far enough where I don't have line of sight. I mean, it's not much. I don't have it. <laughs> it was the perfect play. <laughs> and this is the... Beginning of my turn before charges. And there's the man eaters. The man eaters have poison, they have five attacks apiece. I expect to plow into that that uh, Gorgon with no problem. Uh, I give them swift stride so that they've got a better chance of getting the ogre bull charge off. And that D3 impact hits per guy and all those poison attacks. Generally, they just destroy monsters. It doesn't even matter what the toughness is. So there they go. They did not get an, in the super impact hits, which is unfortunate. I was hoping for it, but you know, I, I still got 15 poison attacks, strength five, weapon skill four. You know, going going towards that gorgon. <laughs>
And that's the rest of my Noblar. The dog is running up to Chaff the Vestigor. The Noblar running up to uh, Chaff the Gore over there. And the whole Noblar uh, treadmill. And look, now I have to turn to face the chariot and get ready for the grape shot, little chariot. I've never used the grape shot, but we're going to see if this works. There's magic. I grunt sickle again. And off goes harmonic convergence. I guess I was wrong. I thought it only went off once this game. Oh, well. And here's shooting. That's what happens when harmonic convergence goes off. I just knocked out the back rank and a couple into the, that second rank. Um, I mean, this unit is really down in combat effectiveness at this point. And there's me firing and misfiring and turning around in circles again. Way to go, Iron Blaster. <laughs> it's really working out for this guy. <laughs> I'm not even sure I rolled the direction. I, I think I always have my opponents just tell me what direction they wanted to face. <laughs> Such a quirky miscast, a misfire chart. And this was a surprise. I only did three wounds between the three impact hits and the 15 poison attacks. And he does three wounds to me. I win combat by, by the banner and the charge. So it wasn't by very much. Um, he sticks. So he's not going anywhere. And this is not good because he's still got the Pumba back there. And I'm just not sure that I can get, I can win the combat if by only doing something like this. I mean, I've got to do three more wounds on him. And he can charge that Pumba in there. And it's not, not going to be pretty. So here's the beginning of his charges. That's As you can see, the Noblar treadmill is in action. He drove off two units of Noblar. Since they don't panic anybody, it, it works really well. And I've got the general right, right nearby, so they, they're going to rally very easily and then just do this again. And there's the chariot just moving on up, just being like, hey, guy, I'm going to charge you next turn. You know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. Oh, I'm the best to go are going to kill my dog. He's such a cute blue dog. I don't know why. I really love those models. <laughs> or maybe I just really love the paint job on him. I did a great job with the dog. <laughs> and there's the Pumba Gore getting in there. Saying hi to my man ears. Who really screwed the pooch trying to kill that Gorgon. And there's these guys just moving up. Coming to say hi. There's magic. He knocks off a wild form in that unit. I don't think I wanted that to go off, but he double sixed it. Uh, I think he lost a wizard level, and that was it. It was it was a pretty mild miscast, but I mean, it's going to protect that unit for another turn, so I, I clearly clearly worth it. Oh, and the best of course just murdered the dog. I, I don't even think we rolled this up. <laughs> and then he just reformed him a little bit. They're not in ranks of ten anymore. He just kind of did the minimum he had to to, to really fit him in. Yep, and the man eaters go down. Uh, they, it. It didn't go well. I'm not, I'm not sure if I did any wounds. I might have done one, maybe two tops the Gorgon. I didn't do anything to the Pumbaa Gore. Like I said, I thought I was going to be able to kill off that Gorgon, and I got mauled. Yep, that, they failed the panic check, and they're all the way back there. And there's the Razor Gore overrunning, or not, yeah, overrunning um, all the way back here. And there's the Gorgon just turning to face my lines, which is not good. I really don't want him in the flank of those lead belchers. So here's how the battle looks. You can see he is surrounding my army, and my chap is slowly dwindling away. And the charges begin. So it's better for me to charge rather than to be charged, so that's what I go for. The Iron Guts are headed towards that unit of Vestigor. I think I can just plow straight through them. Um, that shouldn't be much of a problem. I even get a the Ogre Impact hits here, as you can see, by the 6 and the 5 right there. And there's me making the charge. That's going to be a bad day for those best of gore. <laughs> now there's that unit rallying to say hi to the Pumba Gore. I still don't think I'm going to win that combat, though. Uh, Pumba's not too not too shabby on the charge. That plus one uh, strength and four attacks. And the bulls are just bulls. There's the dog showing why he's so useful. He's just hopping right in front of that Gorgon. So he can charge the dog, and then he's going to kill it and then overrun over the hill away from the lead belchers or he could try to avoid the dog and he's just going to have to move out of the way and waste his turn so he's got a choice to make there and there's the iron blaster turning to face the uh, chariot again see if I can get that that there grape shot thing going <laughs> 
And as you can see, the Noblar are moving up to chaff that unit of, uh, of Gore. I throw out some Ice Shard Blizzard just in case uh, we actually get to this, this point and there are still some models down. I don't want them to kill off my characters because that character shield wall is going to deploy as soon as we start combat. Oh, and the shooting phase comes, and down goes the Gorgon. Uh, I think I shot all my lead belchers at him, and that killed him. Yeah, this is probably the uh, the second unit of lead belchers not doing particular, not doing a ton of damage, as you can see. And there's me doing a single wound with my my second round of grape shot. God, grape shot, just not good. Here's combat. Actually, this is. The impact hits. I did nine wounds. I have never done three wounds for every... I've never done three impact hits for every guy and then proceeded to wound with every single one of them. But I did in this one. So we haven't even, haven't even attacked yet. And I've already taken out half the unit. And the rest of the unit went down really quickly. And it was just the Beast Lord left. I decided to pursue him. Didn't catch him. He really scampered off and I didn't go very far, which becomes a real big problem. Um... Uh, later on, as you'll be able to see. Alright, turn four. He just charges that chariot right into my chariot. So this is the time that I have to hope that toughness six holds up. Because we know that the Iron Blaster, just the leadership isn't there. Usually when he gets into combat, he charged by something like this. If it does a couple wounds to him, he generally goes away. I had to hold here with the Noblar as a result of that really crappy roll. Um, and this is a problem, because... As soon as he kills these guys, uh, my whole flank is just going to be exposed, and that's not good. I mean, usually I like to just flee these guys, but yep, they had to stay. Otherwise, he'd be able to redirect straight into the flank of my Iron Guts. This is a terrible picture, as you can tell. This is those that unit of Gore got into one of my unit of Lead Belchers, and they're just going to just going to make a mess of those poor Lead Belchers. Uh, lead belchers just aren't aren't great in combat, and those guys strike first. They've got all the rerolls. Uh, they're just going to knock out a whole bunch of them. Hopefully, I can I can get away though. And there's the uh, Pumba charging into the bulls. And there's his general not rallying. It would have been nice if he had rallied, but he didn't. And uh, he's not too far away from me, but I'm going to make a huge mistake concerning that very soon. There's the Noblar. He killed off eight. I'm not even sure we rolled all of them. <laughs> I think this is just a couple of... I think this is a character in like a front rank or something. These guys break, and he's just going to run them down. Uh, he, I, I only took one wound. Um, I lost by two in this combat because I didn't do anything back to him. I somehow don't flee. I don't know why, but I don't. Here's this combat. Like I said, he just knocked out the second rank. I didn't do very much, and I flee. He chooses not to pursue me because he wants to get in that middle. He sees the, the Iron Guts are in trouble. They're kind of in the middle of the table. And he thinks he can surround them and take them out. And these guys somehow kill off that Pumba. And everything looks like this. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up charging those Lead Belchers, those Bulls, into the rear, into that, uh, into that unit of Gore there. If it was just the Lead Belchers, I'd be worried. But that unit of bulls getting lucky and killing off that, uh, and uh, actually, you know, killing the uh, uh, Razor Gore, that, that was a big surprise. So that's going to help out a lot. So there's the charge. I actually sent in the Iron Blaster, and I had to send in the Noblar to get the Iron Blaster in there. <laughs> Unfortunately, because Noblar never liked doing anything I asked him to do, they're just going to fail the charge. <laughs> Good old Noblar. They never do anything I ask them to do. <laughs> oh, and there's my thumb up there. I gotta find a new camera. <laughs> there's another terrible shot. I made a terrible decision here. I decided to charge the Beast Lord. I was thinking, well, if I catch him, I'll be all the way over there. But worst case scenario is I go 2d6 inches, and I'll be all the way away from the, the danger where I was at. And that's just not true. <laughs> um, I should have never charged. I should have just moved all the way up. Because if he rallies the next turn, I can still charge him the following turn. Um, but the failing of the charge leaves me wide open for a flank charge by those uh, the gore with the beast banner on my left. 
There's the failed charge, the Iron Blaster, and the Noblar. The Noblar, I think, like, rolled a 1 and a 2 or something like that. They did not go anywhere. And there's the failed charge with those guys. I cast Harmonic Convergence. Oh. And there's Ice Shard Blizzard. As you can see, I moved those Noblar up in hopes that it'll be able to block those Gore off. But you can see it right there. What's going to happen is, is he's going to wheel to hit the Noblar. The Noblar, he's going to have to stop when he gets too close to my bulls. The Noblar are going to have to turn to him. So when he murders the Noblar, and he will murder the Noblar, <laughs> he's going to be able to uh, overrun directly into the flank of my, my Iron Guts. And that's that's not good. But maybe the Ice Shard Blizzard will help me out. Oh, there's that. This combat just keeps going. It looks like I did a couple more wounds right here. And here we go. I crushed those bulls. They're just dead. I crushed the gore. They're just dead, dead, dead. I went straight through them. Um, I didn't kill them right out. I did have to pursue them to, to get rid of them. But uh, I did. Just murdered them. And so the level 4 is gone. So I don't have to worry about his magic anymore. Oh, and there's the Iron Blaster. Apparently he killed him in combat. Um, and there's no more chariot. Somehow I won that engagement. This is what the table looks like at the top of turn 5. And, uh, yeah, it's not going to go well for my Iron Guts over there. There's the Noblar, which that thin Noblar wall isn't going to last long. As you can see, the thin Noblar wall did not last very long. Uh, he just crunched it and went straight through. We had a good time. It was pretty funny. Uh, Triple T knew as soon as I screwed that up, as soon as I, I made that charge, he knew that he just had the flank of the unit. And this isn't good. Um, I've got a bunch of characters in the unit. There's a lot of points in this unit. There's me just reforming. I'm just moving around. There's not a lot left to do. He's just got the Beast Lord and that one unit with the uh, the BSV in it. And as you can see, I cast Ice Shard Blizzard. I've also got Harmonic Convergence on that, that unit of Iron Guts. But uh, it's it's not going to matter. Yeah, as you, can, as you can see, it just didn't matter. He did a bunch of wounds. He actually did a, a bunch more wounds to the characters than I expected him to. Um, I mean, with the minus one to hit... And uh, with Harmonic Convergence, I didn't expect him to do much, but he did everything he needed and uh, just knocked him out. Just couldn't catch the unit, though. Um, this is after he's already charged, actually. Yeah. So he didn't even get him on the charge, either. Yep. Yeah, so this is actually my turn, the beginning of my turn. Um, so uh, the game's pretty much already over. Uh, I don't really do anything. I just rolled a rally, and I don't rally. Not that that's a big deal in 8th edition, but that's where I end up at the end of the game. And as you can see, he's just got that one unit kind of surrounded by everything. And uh, his Beast Lord's still somewhere. I think he's hiding on the other side of this building. <laughs> I just can't see him, but he survives the game. Oh, there he is. Yep, just on the other side of the building, chilling out, saying hey. And there it is, the final score. I ended up picking up 1,707 points to his 833. Um, yeah, I was, uh, the game ended up being a lot closer because of me screwing up in, uh, in that turn five. Uh, if I'd managed to get away, I, it wouldn't have been particularly close. But like I said, it was fun. Everybody had a blast, and that's really all that matters. And uh, there's this Beast Lord saying hey to my, uh, my Heaven's Master right there, looking at his little ball and everything. All right, just want to thank you guys for coming out and watching my first battle report. Take it easy.